Well, that was a silly thing to do because I think I've just broken a leg off that FPU. See this blue wire? It comes from that oscillator. That's a 40 megahertz oscillator and it was feeding that clock into said FPU. I had a pin lifted on it here. I think that's the remnants of said pin there. Still stuck to this wire. But while it worked, it was very untidy. So I've already tidied up the power on the ground running into the oscillator. I had no intentions of making a video about this by the way, but since I've screwed up and snapped the leg off that, how about we try and fix it? So let's just be sure that I have actually done what I think I have. And yeah, our leg is gone. There's the remnants of it there. I think we're gonna need a Dremel. Or at least a very close approximation of one of them. This is my Dremel. I picked this up from Lidl's a while back. For anyone not familiar with that name, Lidl is a brand of grocery stores here in the UK and Ireland, maybe in parts of Europe as well. But in between all the groceries, well, they also sell random tools, household items, and when I seen this one day for, I don't know, it was about £15 I think. Well, how could I possibly pass up? So the idea here will be to use this with the stone in it. And we're going to grind off the top of the FPU here just to reveal some more of that pin so that I can solder a wire onto it. Now, when I'm doing this, one thing I like to take note of is the direction in which your Dremel, the direction in which that turns. And you can see an arrow on this one, it's spinning in that direction. So I want to come at this with the head spinning like that, so that when we do get down to the metal there, it can't possibly catch on that and lift it up. Just needs a little bit more, I think. There we are, I can start to see copper. And it's that copper that we need to make a wire onto. It does seem quite destructive, doesn't it? It does look as if I have taken quite a bit out of that chip. But do keep in mind that the die is just gonna be something small in the middle probably about the size of that fingerprint. In fact, it's probably smaller than that. So there is no real harm in doing this, and hopefully in doing so, we can put that chip back in the service. Just the usual cotton bud and uh, IPA. And now we can easily just drop a little bit of solder onto that. So that will be going back in there in a second. But I think first we will just attach a wire to that uh, leg in there. Or the bit of that leg that we have exposed. And of course I'm holding everything wrong here. I'd rather have the iron in my left hand, but let's just see how we get on. Okay, that's that attached. So that will go in there. We do need to be sure though that what I've done there is not making contact to the pin in the socket. So let's just try to be sure. I think that's on that pin, just let me check. Yeah, I think that's on there okay. So any connectivity down to that point? No. So that's fine. And that wire will get looped around and onto there. But to make a better job of it, I'm just gonna put a little bit of heat shrink over it for where this will connect to that point. The heat of the iron alone should be enough to strip back the sheath on that wire. Well, it should be. Sometimes it doesn't quite work. I don't think it's quite worked this time. But if I just hold it there, I should be able to nip a little bit off. So we'll just drop a little bit of solder onto that wire. Again, I have everything about face for myself here. 
but that should be it. And doesn't it look a lot cleaner than what it looked like before? Let's test it to be sure that works now. Although I do have to change out to the O30 accelerator. With the O60 in there, even though that is the LC variant of this chip, which doesn't have an onboard FPU, well, that chip, because there is a variant of it with an internal FPU, all versions of it have no support for an external FPU. So that there, with this in, the 1200 is permanently disabled. But we've got Workbench up here. So if I go into my files disk, into the apps drawer, you should have AIBB. And there we have it, FPU clock 40 megahertz. That would make me think that our FPU is working. Let's just put that to the test, will we? So using the CPU just, let's run an FMath test. There's our result there, 10.06, but if we turn on the coprocessor and run that test again, yeah, that's more like it, 34.53, our FPU is back in service, all the wiring looks a lot better, and I can get on now and test the 1260 that I want to. So don't need that right now, don't need my own 1260, rather I need this one, this one that belongs to Jerry, it has the full fat 060 in it so this thing does have the FPU on board, it is supposedly a Rev6 chip but it seemingly does have a problem. That will be the focus of the next mini video though, and so I'll see you then.